So uh, uh, today I uh, so I and Vivek will be speaking on how or uh, like some of our experiences of sending or uh, the data code that happens uh, from a dev box like uh, the whole process of from a dev box to production. Uh, these are some of our experiences that we that we had for the past uh, one uh, one or two years uh, that I've been into it and. Hopefully, like what 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 our learnings have been over the past uh, couple of years. So, uh, like trying to experiment all the various different ways and our orthodox way, orthodox ways to like get things done at Fab. So, uh, my name is Vipul. Uh, I I until Friday I was at Fab. I uh, I was a Rails con uh, Rails developer over there. Uh, I, in my spare time, I like to contribute to Ruby and Rails, and you can find me on Twitter on uh, Twitter and GitHub at Triple and Swart. I have Vivek with me. Uh, maybe he can introduce himself later. Right. So, uh, a part is totally divided into two parts. Uh, so I'll be I'll be giving a brief intro. Like I'll be proceeding with the dev part of the whole talk. So it's divided into the uh, what happens or what what mindset. Uh, or experiences that a developer has, and then on to, based on those experiences, taking it up uh, with operations and how how all those experiences come uh, like based on that experiences and other uh, other things that are involved, how we are actually using it in production. So so I'll be speak, I'll start off with the dev part that currently happens at Fab. Oh sorry. Sure. So, uh, how many of you heard of Fab? Okay, thanks. So, uh, Fab has been uh, so Fab was like launched uh, two years back, and it has been growing a lot. Uh, like it has been known as the fastest growing e-commerce on earth. And so, meaning uh, being the fastest growing e-commerce, it meant that it had to continuously deploy or continuously like have a very fast development model uh, there were around like on an average 5 to 10 de uh, like on a, a busy day like on an average 5 to 10 deployments multiple things going on into development and that kind of uh, so the code structure like from the beginning itself it was like things things needed to go very fast in a very fast manner and uh, multiple things were continuously being developed uh, and so so at that point of time, the whole structure that was there, it was kind of fragmented and people, people were just like uh, trying to get things done. So what, hap what happened in that particular thing was like there was, this, there was this very simple process that was being followed, not very hardcore process of, because the, main, the whole point or like the main focus was getting uh, multiple things or multiple features uh, every day to production. So, this was the basic cycle that we uh, initially being followed. Like there was development, then it went on to QA. Uh, there was so since like continuously multiple features used to be tweaked, changed, and uh, being pushed to production. Uh, low stress was initially being given on tests, and more stress was ultimately like QA. Uh, QA used to do the part of like handling most. Uh, there was high reliability on the QA. Uh, so the term that like what we uh, so people at Fab started using for this kind of process was like super agile, and uh, this meant that we had a short code life of so uh, the whole website at Fab continuously keeps on changing, and the whole code life of let's say I write a piece of code, uh, it has approximately only two months of code life or two to three months of code life, and continuously multiple things are being changed and being pushed. So, in this kind of like very uh, aggressive environment, it was, uh, it was so being uh, multiple things being pushed. It was like more more uh, things could not be tested on local. Like there was lots of so I'll be speaking about the whole stack that is being currently uh, like multiple things that are being used, and having all of these things uh, used on a local development developer machine was quite cumbersome, or it was not like. Uh, it was not possible to do that on a local machine. So, as an example, so more stress or more dependency were happening on the uh, limited amount of staging that were there. So back, 
uh, back around uh, two years or uh, so, there were less number of developers, like let's say 30 or 40 developers, and some limited, limited amount of staging that were being uh, used, and all the developers were continuously dependent on staging environments. So even a single feature uh, that was being done, or, or even a single line of code, was continuously needed to be deployed on staging. To be checked, like it worked in sync with all the other uh, whole architecture that was there. So this is the basic equation that like started off from a year back. Like there were, there were less developers in the beginning and less uh, less staging, but it but they uh, they were being equally shared. More developers started uh, started to join. Like it started growing, and then still still like at the growth of which developers joined, staging could not be uh, staging could not be evaluated at that particular uh, pace. Even more, like even still, uh, Fab is being like it's growing and still continuously stay, uh, developers are joining. But then the rate at which staging and the whole process of uh, getting it done, like QA, is not scalable at uh, was not particularly scalable. So then onwards, like the mindset of of the developers started on to moving, like getting most of the things, uh, whatever the whole environment was there on staging, getting it done on local itself. So just to give you the stat, so it Fab is basically uh, based on Ruby. It's a Ruby on Rails, uh, uh, Ruby on Rails uh, application, uh, wherein all the services like Memcache. So all of these that we have basically set on staging, these all were like so from a developer point of view, it became essential to get all of these things working on sta uh, working on local instead of continuously being de dependent on staging to let's say I have change I tweak a little bit of memcache config like I've changed the key size of my uh, story uh, key size of my memcache or multiple logging things that I've done so all of these things like, it was so the mind shift turned into like getting all of these things into local like let's say my uh, getting hold of the rail server memcache the redis server uh, fab has a uh, different the whole of fab uh, on its back end tries to support all of its pages through solar so it has its own search service, solar service, getting all the configurations for SQ, Node.js, etc. All of this, so all of this getting on the developer's machine and then trying to make fe like produce features and code features in a fast manner. After that, since like the uh, the whole the whole it, it being an e-commerce website, there was continuously changes in the data itself. So. A uh, lot of lot of things like the hierarchy of the taxonomy that we have, or uh, multiple months, there, are, there were very little data points that were associated in the whole of the website that continuously being uh, that were continuously being changed. So, automating the whole of the process so that instead of relying again for data population on staging, getting it all again on the developer's machine, uh, smoke testing on local itself, and various sandboxing that happens like connecting to uh, payment gateways and other services getting all of these things done on a local machine so some of the learnings that uh, came in through like most of the uh, like shifting the focus from getting things done on a staging to like moving to a local environment uh, so some of the learnings were like that when this thing ha started happening people uh, started to fall into various issues like Setting up development environment for a single machine can be like a quite tedious or it can be quite a, a lot of pain. So there are people who work on Macs, there are people who work like on Windows, there are people who develop on uh, Linux. So different people have different configurations and depending on that, uh, getting things done on every every single machine was like quite cumbersome. Uh, it was most felt like in the base uh, when people started upgrade so there are multiple things that keep on going into production and multiple things that keep on upgrading it was most felt when even a single gem change broke the whole uh, development and uh, development cycle and so like when new developers came in like it's continuously growing so when new level of us get come in setting of a single machine could like waste a developer's whole week or so so changing that whole time to like let's, let's say getting it to getting him started on the day one itself so the focus like then shifted to like use such kind of services uh, like maybe sprout wrap boxin uh, these initialized scripts that were available making them available to the developers and asking the developers of making the whole 
So, if you've heard of uh, these services, they allow you to uh, configure your uh, configure the whole machine, uh, developer machines, so that uh, based on different different environment you want to set for a particular project, you could uh, you could have your whole org uh, configuration of the whole laptop being set up by all of these uh, multiple projects that are available. So, the focus was like now being changed to having a streamlined uh, to having a streamlined focus on such kind of services instead of like uh, since like continuously things were changing and it, it needed to be propagated to multiple developers uh, dev boxes. So then stress started on coming to like making seed data, uh, so stress starts on coming to making seed data available that is when a developer, new developer is setting a machine for making the whole seed data available regarding like let's say in case of e-commerce website, uh, the whole taxonometry and uh, different things. Uh, setting up like setting up having setup having different setup tasks on depending on considering various configuration environments and anticipating that okay developers are going to work in different environments and getting all those things done on different machines and making them available. <coughs> so, so the problem so the another problem that came from the uh, cycle that we had like most of the things going uh, continuously being going to QA and having less number of stagings was like less number of coding was done and more time like a day or so was being so features were getting continuously pipelined uh, in through for QA and that reduced the that reduced the whole uh, time of getting things to production so reducing that was one another focus that uh, that needed to be done so one alternative that like so as i said i, I started off with another uh, i'll be starting off from monday on another uh, another one of the uh, persons I'll be working with. So as a solution, one of the things that could be done is like having disposable stagings. So uh, the person I'll be starting off like uh, I'm starting off with uses some kind of thing like Insta it's, a, it's an internal tool. Uh, you can check it out at instapusher.com and what it does Snap CI uh, that happens at uh, uh, which ThoughtWorks develops. So some similar kind of ideology of having disposable stagings. So now the workflow shifts from uh, instead of having the whole uh, dependence on stagings and like having dedicated stagings to like uh, if you have if you have if you're using Git as your uh, version control system, just <coughs> develop a feature branch, develop on it, continuously commit on it, and just uh, insta push it. So, for a particular uh, project, like let's say, you if you uh, you define set of set of commands for okay, let's say this should be done. So, as I said previously, you have set of uh, set of rules, like set of ideologies that you give to your developer uh, uh, from your developer's point point of perspective that you should have set up tasks or you should have uh, seed data that should be continuously being put in by the developers using all of that and setting up uh, setting up tasks so that uh every single feature that you develop you can generate a whole new, whole new staging and get it set, send it immediately or whatever feature that you have to your QA get it verified <coughs> you all of your like throw up your whole of your dev box again and then iterate over, over the whole process so what InstaPusha basically does uh, or what a service basically should be doing is like it creates a new whole new staging environment uh, currently it uh, creates a whole whole new Heroku instance setup and sample data env configs, startup services and other uh, post or post scripts or other hooks that, that should be run after the whole uh, getting up of, of an environment. Uh, so at this point I'll just like to, oh. yeah. So like I started off working on let's say uh, this particular branch and I create a branch, a simple feature that I want. I provide settings regarding okay this this is my particular project that I have on github these are the stages this is what should be uh, my config variables and commands that should be run and I give a I give my Heroku key and what it basically like on on a single uh, uh, after developing I just need to say since my project is being associated there I just need to say insta portion it will be it will create a whole new Heroku instance and deploy on that particular thing 
So the point over here is okay. different things that are involved to like getting the whole uh, set, spending that that little amount of time that needs to happen from a staging like from a developer box to getting things on a staging. So getting that getting that faster and having this kind of setup like reduces lo a lot of time. So some of the learnings that that came into picture like from all this uh, all this were like uh, the whole setup for a whole developer machine should be pretty uh, for a setting up of a whole developer environment should also be automated and it should be it should not be like the developer is any ended up wasting a lot of a whole lot of week or something like that. Uh, there should be better local development in terms of it should it should the developer should have that ideology that okay uh, you should be considering that whatever you are doing it on your local machine needs to be in the same fashion it is going to be replicated and the whole set of tasks should, is going to be done in a faster way on the staging. I have a question. Uh, there was a sample data you said that this if you go to the previous slide you have a set up of sample data. So yes. How do you do that in the sense does does the does a uh, dev require? So does does a dev require all the data? I mean, a patient like a hospital management thing. So creating of your patients and other information, and having having a, a set of base data, which is na uh, which like <coughs> it, it, it should be natural. Like I have actual information for let's say uh, information about vitamins or information about medicines or actual patient information. Like mimic the whole production environment, sure. and this should be embarked in the mind of developer that this is how you should be uh, continuously developing on top of it. But so that be, this would be a little uh, painful to maintain as soon as you make a column change or you know uh, in any change in your taxonomy of your of, of, your, of your data exactly. layer then you'll have to change all these scripts. Exactly uh, that's the point I'm trying to make that 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 should be the stress on top of uh, like in the mind of a developer that he needs to also along with this he should be uh, considering you know, this because there should be zero time zero time required for other developer to get on the, onto this particular project. So if a, a single a developer who is trying to develop for this, he just need to check out the repository and run this task. So he has the, he has a whole mimic like whole environment which mimics production in his local machine. Okay. And this this tries to uh, this also ha, uh, tries to like create the disposable stagings that I was speaking about. So yeah. So I'll finish off with like. So these are the learnings that like came into picture. Uh, <coughs> spending more time on these kind of things reduces uh, in the whole picture. It reduces developer developer's time for like getting small small things on his own local machine, and then tra like it then transitions to saving time of setting up of your for setting up of your stagings or getting your whole project and multiple configurations run on different uh, uh, from developer to developer mm, and yeah and yeah that's all that i have from my side so uh, vivek will continue that we call. So the first challenge that we wanted to address was deploying to a shared environment. So the very first thing is why did we want a shared environment when, when we can recreate the environment in one go. So we have the product owners so sitting on site in US so basically we have a 24 cross 7 available so we should have a 24 cross 7 availability where a developer when he develops from the development box and when the QA signs off it has to go to the staging and it has to be live so that the other team that is there on the on-site, he can come and uh, <coughs> have a look at the issue, issues or whatever features there that, that they wanted to be implemented and uh, <coughs> give the feedback. <coughs> so the first question that we had, which tool to use in order to build a process that uh, <coughs> so that we can, uh, so basically we, we wanted to use a tool so that we can build an entire process and uh, <coughs> So the answer was Chef. 
So why did we go for Chef? Because since we are Ruby on Rails application, so we can code well in Ruby. Also, Chef provides uh, out of the box capability of SEM sub um, so <coughs> source con <coughs> configuration management tool and the deployment process as well. Also, the attribute override that could be very helpful in, our, in deploying to the shared environments was really helpful for us. And it also provides a variety of search queries, so you can search on a variety of queries, a uh, variety of uh, options that you can have, and that was really helpful for us. Data bags and the knife and management tool. So if you, so basically primarily will, I, I'll, so initially I'll talk about the attribute files. So basically what happens is in the shared environment, we share one of the, uh, we share machines across all these stagings. So what happens is a particular machine can play at point of time as, as the application, so during the deployment process, a single machine can play as the application server for one environment, whereas during the another deployment, the same machine can work as the application machine, application server machine for the another environment. So we wanted to have an attribute uh, override facility where we could just, over the runtime, we can just decide which environment we should lie into. So we came up with this attribute thing, so which Chef provides. So if you look at the values, so we have, we can just say application is there. So let's say we have warehouse management system, we have web application system, we have search. So on the runtime, we can just decide. So if this machine can act as a web application as well, so we can also decide that during another deployment process, it can act as a WMS <coughs> application also. So what happens is, so basically, so we use a tar version kind of, so basically we build a tar and we have to deploy it, we discuss it later. And we also decide what all services need to be started at the runtime. Because that can depend upon the application. So if, if it is a web application, it has to, we have to restart the passenger and nginx, whereas if it is a search application, we have to restart the Tomcat servers and the solar servers. So if you look at the deployment process, so this is the entire structure of the deployment process. So what we do exactly is we check out the directory, the repository, we create tar out of it, and uh, then we say update data bag items. So when we say update data bag items, so basically what we do is, so in a typical race application, we have YAML files. So since it is a critical data, we do not want it to be kept into the repository. Instead, we want it to keep, keep it somewhere where we can keep it secure. So we went for data bag items, data bags. So data bag out of the box itself gives us encrypted data bags, <coughs> so which helped us to keep, keep our data secure. So when I say update data bag items, so it's basically we have kept the encrypted format, format of the data bags, and if there has been a change, so basically someone will just uh, take out the unencrypted, I mean, the plain text format of the um, data bag and edit it and again upload it with a secret key in order to encrypt it. And also the generate attribute file. So since we have to decide at the runtime during the deployment process itself, which environment it has to go to, what application servers, what services we have to restart, and what, are, what uh, and some runtime behaviors. So basically we generate an attribute file in order to check the attributes on all the nodes. And then once this process is done, we upload the entire thing. So basically we do not up to up, upload the data by item. It, has, it, it is with the chef server. We upload the tar file and the attribute file to the, to the S3. Then during the deployment process, we set the node attributes so that the subsequent process can identify that what, are, what behavior it has to perform. And then we download the tar as per the attribute set. So, so previously I talked about the tar version. So at the runtime, when we generate the tar, we say that this tar version you have to deploy. And then identifying the tar version and the location at the S3, it basically downloads the tar and un it installs it. Installs as in, it just untars it. Once that thing is done, so when we are sure that our code has been deployed properly, we just create the configs that is necessary for the rest application to run. And then we do the migration thing, we run the migration, and then we just restart the app services that we have. So once this is done, so we say yes, we have achieved, yes, yep. Uh, where are you guys hosted? AWS. Oh, okay, so uh, with AWS, doesn't it make sense uh, to create an AWS snapshot instead of creating a tar AWS snapshot? Yes. So, so basically uh, what the, so basically the, so the problem is, so creating an AMI, it, 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 it will take some time, okay? Also, so when we really say that, so it, it takes around 9 seconds for us. So any AMI cannot take 9 seconds to complete for us. 
So basically, it, it, it's a use case based one. Also, since we have a shared environment, so each time a machine can behave differently. Either it could, it could go to the solar machine, it could, solar search, it could go to the WMS, it could go to the web machine. So basically, we wanted to streamline the process, build a process where a machine, so basically, since we have a lot of staging around there, we have around 20 staging environments. So in order to sustain, we, we do not want to throw money, money. So basically, we <coughs> emphasize on sharing the machines. So since the machine has been shared, so we have to decide on the runtime. So if we go on building the AMI, it will take some time, and maybe it could be, it could, it could not align to the emphasis that we wanted to make. But with AWS, you pay as you go. Right. You can always create new instances and responsibilities. Yeah. So that what that's what I said earlier also. So basically, it's a 24 plus 7. So so we deploy. So it has to run online. So basically, it's a business policy. So we cannot just terminate it. So basically, it has to be there because any of the product owner that sits on either in Europe and US, so he has to come up and uh, take a feedback on that. Okay, so deployment was done. So what was next? So the next challenges that we had, so we, did, we just made a raw, raw process where just, we could just deploy to the production and staging environment. But the next challenge was that we had to reduce the deployment time. So before this process, we used to take around seven, seven minutes to four point five minutes to seven minutes in a deployment. So we wanted to reduce to less than a minute so that we can push it every now and then. Also, so the since it's a e-commerce company and a, and the product owners can never be satisfied of in in one go. So basically, they come up with some um, <coughs> runtime fixes that we, they wanted to make. So we had to implement some things, some process where we can just introduce hot fixes in runtime and in a very short span of time. So the first thing, reduce deployment time. So these two, these two things are the primary thing that we <coughs> came up with that deploy just what you need. You do not need to deploy everything, the entire thing, because when you do deployment, you do not, uh, development, you do not modify all the files. Instead, you modify a few of the files and you modify a few of the configuration files. So, and reduce attribute override times. So basically what happens in the chef world, when you set an attribute, it takes some time to persist the data that you have. So basically what happens is when you set the attribute, so it is given to the chef server as well. So it has to be persisted that there. So what happens is it, it takes some time. So since we have around uh, 250 machines, it takes a lot of time. So we, what we wanted to make is that instead of, so, so there we have two approaches. One, we could have gone with the threat process. Another, so, so if we just go with the threat process, so let's say, we have 20 stage deployment and 20 staging that is going on, whereas uh, also the production deployment is also going on. So it will hamper because it will slow on the machine, which is triggering the deployment. So instead, we, what we wanted is that why why can't we use the, the machines as the threads? So basically, what we call it is the patch deployment. So basically, deploy what you need. So what we do is we just identify what was the last revision that was deployed and what is the current revision that is going to be deployed. We just take a summary of that and just identify what are file are, file are they and we just pull out a tar from that and create necessary config, uh, necessary config files. What, what is that? That we have around 16 or 17 config files but we change around 2 to 3 a day, I mean on an average. So if it is not a major release, what we can do is we can just identify, yes, we just need to create these three files. So what it is do is, so <coughs> the data that, that is being transmitted in order to create the YAML files or the config files, it won't be much because the files, the number of files that is being created, it is less. Now the, what the patch deployment process is, it basically pulls the current revision, large deployed RPA version, revision, and then dip between the two revisions and creates a tar, identify change configuration and deploy. So now basically, so, the, the second thing that was hot fixes. So since we are a designer company, so we, we sell designer products, so, so anything related to the UI cannot be accepted. That this is what our, we wanted to be. So the hot fixes can include anything. It could be a configuration file, it could be a, the application level file that has to be there. So apart from that, so, so basically if we want to deploy a configuration file or a application file that can be that easily with the patch deployment method. But the problem that was there is with the uh, JavaScript and the CSS file that, that could be changes, changed. So what we 
So, so basically, so in order to deploy a JavaScript or a CSS file, we had to do a minification, a merge, and merge, and then upload it to uh, upload it to S3. So this will be our using CloudFront. So we have a couple of tools. So in order to do a merge and compress of the entire thing, it takes around uh, 49 to 50 seconds. But let's say if uh, if I have to do a JS deployment in individually, so either I could go with a full code full code push. And uh, <coughs> since it could not be a part of the package plan because we are merging compressing and that is not in the current process that we have. So what we did is that again identify what the JavaScript has been or the CSS has modified and identify which group does it belong to. And then just merge and compress with that group and just upload it to S3. And since JavaScript and things do not need much of any other services restarted basically in the app servers, so it works fine. So it just goes in the runtime. Thank you. using InstaPushers some time back uh, and so it's it being used uh, for a consultancy that I'll be working with and the main focus was on there are multiple cons the projects that are uh, running uh, at a time uh, two or three projects that are continuously being run the main focus was that individual product like that individual uh, like let's say uh, project and different features being developed for a single project, getting that run uh, in a fast, uh, fast manner. But on top of that, if you if you need, uh, you could be defining multiple like script, uh, let's say scripts, or I'm not I'm not pretty sure. You could be defining a set of commands, post, uh, post like getting your it's 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 running on Heroku, so. Post your deployment, whatever, uh, whatever different things you want to or uh, orchestrate, like uh, let's say getting your jobs, uh, getting, your, getting your jobs working, or uh, in the back end, like get, getting your solar service working, getting your search service working. That in the background, like starting it as a background process, or uh, I'm not sure about forking a diff whole different uh, another environment about. But uh, this basically was started off with the focus of uh, having monolithic applications, like starting monolithic applications. Uh, this this could be tweaked for like sending post and uh, like uh, on Heroku post scripts to like maybe spawn a different en another environment. So as a developer, like I, I pretty much like this. Uh, you people, uh, there were lot, lots of discussion yesterday about Snap CI uh, that you people mostly know about. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.